what's up divas and what's up divos it's your girl april so you guys already know that and i'm pretty sure you guys already know what time it is it is a wednesday so that means that it is real talk wednesday when we just start dishing out the tea talking shit giving advice and letting people know what the fuck is on our minds okay I hope my video don't come out lopsided because I'm looking at the camera and it's not too straight, but we're just going to go with the flow. I think, well, you know what? I'm irritated by it, so let's do it. Okay, so that's much better. Um, okay, so um, that's much better. So first of all, let me tell y'all something because I'm so irritated. Um, have you ever been so irritated by just anything, one person or whatever that you just start crying, like just irritated? Okay, so yesterday, well, by the time this go up, it won't be yesterday, it'll be two days ago. But on Monday, January 9th was my appointment to go see about my scar here at the dermatologist. Now, mind you, my appointment was at 1045, okay? It was at 1045 in the morning and I had my daughter Mumsy with me because they didn't go back to school until the 10th um, Tuesday and I had my grandson with me because my Tati was at her um, her job. So I had called them ahead of time and let them know that I was going to be five minutes late, even though it was kind of like down the street. It was like two miles, two and a half miles from my house where it was. Um, and I called them and let them know that I was going to be five minutes late, which I really didn't even need to do because I was thinking that my appointment at the time of me calling them was 1030. You know, like 1045 was a little bit off for a time of appointment but i didn't realize that until i was driving there that i was like oh girl i looked at my thing i was like is that 10 45 you good so it's it's um it's 10 38 10 40 now and it's right there right there so when about the time i got there i had to park all the way in the back of the parking lot it's in this huge building now mind you this huge building houses like a lot of other doctor's offices I'm not really used to going to that, but it is what it is. So when I get in, I have to, um, you know, I walk through this building. We walk through the parking lot. I got Tinky in his stroll. I walk through the parking lot. And there's like, I'm um, not even exaggerating, like 20 something people waiting for two elevators. Okay. And you got people sitting in the lobby and stuff. Like I said, this is like this big, big ass medical building. And I have to go to the third floor. I'm not about to walk up no fucking steps with no stroller. So I was like, well, she told me not to be more than 15 minutes late. It's 1045 now. So I only got to get to the third floor. So I get to the third floor finally. You know, I let the, the first set of people go on the first elevator. And this said elevator five, all right, five and six. Where was elevator one, two, three, and four? I don't even know, okay, because the building was, that was the main entrance, but whatever. So I get up to the third floor and you know, I had to go to room 350, suite 350. That was where the dermatologist was at. So you know how they have the signs on the walls with the hours pointing numbers, such and such to such and such. So there were two signs. One said rooms 300 to 359 this way, pointing to the left and 360 to whatever that way. So I'm like looking all boggled and crazy like, if you go to the left, you're going to walk into the wall or to that, that room right there with the empty door, which is probably a broom closet. So Mumsy was like, well, walk down the hall. Maybe the sign is messed up. So we did that. And I was like, no, they, the numbers is getting, they going up. So we walking back and forth, back and forth. And I'm like, I'm trying this door that I know is a broom closet. Okay. Don't ask me why I kept trying it, but I just kept trying it and I kept trying it. So finally I see one of the cleaning people that worked there. You know, they're cleaning out the bathroom and I'm like, I'm like, can you please tell me where room 350 is at? Oh, it's on the other side of the elevator. I'm like, it's on the other side of the elevator. Now, mind you, the elevator wasn't to the left. The elevator was to the left turn and turn. And there was only two rooms. There was only two doors next to the elevator on the other side of the elevator. So I'm like, okay, I'm just going to take her word for it because she worked here. So I get to the elevator and I look. Sure enough, it's room 305 and 350. But the sign said rooms 300 to 359. Where the fuck is all the other numbers at? So it went from 305 to Room 305 was right here, and room 350, where I needed to be, was right here. Like, 
All right, I know there's numbers in between. Where the fuck they at? Is this like the Matrix right now? I'm bugging the fuck out. So by the time I finally found the room that I was supposed to be in, it was exactly 11 o'clock on the dot. So I go to the front desk, and there's nobody sitting in the waiting area of that dermatologist's office. Nobody but this one little old lady. It's so quiet. So, you know, I give her my name. Well, I have to see if you can still be seen because you're more than 15 minutes late. No, bitch, I'm really not more than 15 minutes late. I'm exactly 15 minutes fucking late, okay? Exactly. And when I walked through the door, it was actually 10.59, but I'm going to just round it off to 11 o'clock because, you know, that's what the fuck we do. I was like, um, okay. So she goes back, and I don't know who she asked, but she comes back with this bullshit-ass story talking about I can't be seen because I'm more than 15 minutes late. So this is what I say to her. I said, I've been here walking around this building trying to figure out where your room was at, and you know you got a, um, a sign outside that points to left, and all you do is walk into the wall, into a broom closet. She was like, oh, I know. So I've been standing out here trying to figure my way around, trying to find you guys, but you're telling me you know that that sign is off and you're not going to let me be seen? Like, who the fuck does that? Let me tell you, I was so excited about this appointment, like really excited. And for her to tell me no, I got so upset. Like, I'm just tired of sometimes people just be walking all over me and I be feeling like people are walking all over me, especially when I try to just keep my composure and be fucking nice. You know what I'm saying? And she was like, well, you can come back at two o'clock. And I was like, I'm not coming back here today. Like my whole attitude, my whole mood changed. You know what I'm saying? Like I went from... And a, ha a really, really happy emoji. Yeah, like, I'm a happy emoji right now to a fucking red bee angered emoji with horns coming out their head, okay? This how fucking mad I was. And I don't know if she's seen it, and I'm pretty sure she did. And she's just like, well, let me look for an appointment. Like, it was okay, like, but you just fucking told me that you know that the sign is messed up and that I got lost and whatever, it's not my fault, but you still not gonna let me be seen. And you gonna still fucking sit there and try to say I was more than 15 minutes late. Bitch, if it says 10.45 that I'm supposed to be there and I got there exactly at 10.59, which is 14 minutes, but we gonna round it off to 15 minutes, that still ain't more than 15 minutes late. Bitch, do you know how to motherfucking count? And all I could see was red. And all I seen was me taking her by her motherfucking bony ass throat and shoving her face into the counter. This this is how I felt because I was I've been waiting for weeks and weeks and weeks to go see this doctor. So I was really excited. And now you're gonna tell me motherfucking no. So she was like, well, let me see if there's another appointment. I said, yes, please hurry up and find out because I'm about to spaz out right here, right now. So I would advise you to hurry up and get me a new appointment. I, you know what? I try my best not to be rude and um, so, like, nasty like that. But I was so upset that I just started tearing. I started crying. And Mumsy was just looking at me like, don't cry, don't cry. And it wasn't even the fact that I was crying because my feelings was hurt, because they really wasn't. Like, little shit like that don't make my feelings hurt, but shit like that pisses me the fuck off. And that's two, those are two different things. From feelings being hurt and pissing me the fuck off, those are two, <coughs> two different things in a whole. And I just started crying because I felt really, I just started getting really angry. And I felt like defenseless. Like, I felt like, like, I felt vulnerable and I felt violated you know what I'm saying and I just really was so angry that I wanted to just smash her fucking face in okay and I knew I couldn't because as I was thinking about doing it because I was like really getting close to her all I could see was Tinky and Mumsy sitting there like bitch if you smash her face in you know they're gonna call the police and you're gonna go to jail and they're gonna take those kids somewhere so just chill the fuck out April but it just started really irritating me and I started crying and I just was like Joe just hurry the fuck up like I just my whole attitude I just went from zero to, to 60 real quick with no problem and then I started feeling like, you know what, I'm tired of these motherfuckers taking advantage of me. This is not the first time that this has happened. Um, when I went to the vein doctor, I had to get an ultrasound on my veins. And, you know, you get undressed for the vein doctor. You got to put on these little cargo paper shorts. And, you know, they got to put the gel on you. The same things that they would do for a pregnant woman with the gel, they do the same exact thing for your veins for ultrasound. They, they got the machine. They listen and they look and map in my veins is what they call it. This fucking nurse comes in talking about she need help in the next room. The nurse and the doctor 
doctor that was with me, not even a doctor, the nurse and the technician who was with me asked me, do you mind if we go to the next room to help her real quick? And I was like, um, what do you have to do and how long is this going to take? She told me 20 minutes and I said, no, I have something to do. And she said, well, look, I can't help you right now. I have a patient and when I'm done, I'll come help you. That's all. Did this bitch two minutes later after she asked me and they left, she stopped in the middle of it with the technician and was like, I got to go help her. I'll be back. This bitch just got the fuck up and walked off. I was like, no, this fucking bitch did. Do you really think that I'm about to fucking lay here and wait for you for 20 minutes? You out your motherfucking rabbit ass mom, bitch. I fucking smacked the shit out of you. I got dressed. And when I left out, the nurse at the front desk was like, where are you going? You're not even done. I said, you damn right I'm not done. But I'm not about to sit here and wait no freaking 20 minutes, which would turn into like 40 minutes when I was already being taken care of. And she going to ask me, do I mind? And I said, no. What you going to give me options for? And then fucking take them away. You really didn't mean that shit? You going to fucking leave and have me sitting up up in there on some bed stretch? You crazy. I said, I'll be back. The next day, I had an appointment in that same building for my um f who was it for it was for my knee well i made it my business to go to the ims portion and let them know that i need another appointment and i wanted to speak to a manager i sure did speak to a manager and it was already told to the manager prior to me she said i heard about the situation and i do apologize that same day i was crying in the park a lot after that lady fucking walked away because i felt like she took advantage of me had she fucking known who the fuck i was meaning not known who the fuck i was meaning muffin is my lovers had she fucking know who the fuck i was or how i give it up that bitch wouldn't have fucking walked out that goddamn room sometimes I be feeling like I be too, I be just too nice to my fucking people, and then they take advantage and, and shit and walk all over me, and I just couldn't take it when I went to that appointment, and she told me no, I couldn't, I just can't take it sometimes, and I'm pretty sure that I'm not the only one that feels that way, so I just wanted to keep you guys intact about that, yeah, so I went, and they didn't tell me nothing, so I go Wednesday, which will be the day this video goes up at 9.45 in the morning, and I'm excited again, but I'm gonna tell you what, when I go in there, it's gonna be a problem, because I'm not gonna be too motherfucking nice, it seems like when you too motherfucking nice to people, they just don't know how to act, and they take advantage of you, which brings me to another point, Y'all motherfucking bitches need to really shut the fuck up and stop running your mouths or leaving dumbass comments on my videos. Yes, I know this is YouTube and you free to say what the fuck you want, but watch what the fuck you say because I'm not the one and I'm really not having it. In 2017, like I told Tati, I ain't putting up with nobody's bullshit. However, she did say that I've been like that for many, many years now since she's known me, but I have been so nice to people on YouTube, meaning the dumb shit that has been said to me or the dumb shit that has been said about my motherfucking daughter i have put it and swept it under motherfucking rug but no more will i do that okay i have come to find out and figure out who the fuck is writing the dumb shit about me and my daughter on our videos which was the latest post when we did another video a few days ago about i'm not her favorite youtuber and it was another treat box the same motherfucking sean haynes came on there and wrote some dumb shit now here's the thing sean haynes i didn't get a chance to block you at the time but i did this time and i also reported you to you YouTube, okay, which they do contact them, but it's somebody that subscribed to me, of course, because it's that same motherfucking somebody that always gives me a thumbs down when the video starts and been live for 10 seconds. This I know, and bitch, I know who the fuck you are, okay, we probably was good friends at one time or another, but you want to be petty, and I'm pretty sure I know who it is, because Tati has said it out of her own mouth, Tati is my daughter, about, oh, I bet you it's such and such doing that shit. You know what I'm saying? So, either way, neither here nor there, I just feel like a lot of females that um, be doing YouTube and feel like they doing YouTube really need to get a life, okay? There's no need to be on anybody's video writing dumb shit about their kids. Like, when you could stoop so low as to bully a nine-year-old child and you're a grown-ass person, then there is a lot to say about you. Really not much, but a lot. You know what I'm saying? Like, what type of person goes around bullying a child? You know, I'm not going to keep getting upset about it because you have to stop and think about these type of people. You're really no fucking body. You damn sure ain't nobody in my book. And bitch, if you gotta disguise yourself as being somebody the fuck else, then you really ain't real. Like, this is what I'm talking about. I hate chump ass bitches, okay? And I'm gonna use that word because I don't like chump 
ass bitches, okay? You a chump ass bitch if you got to use somebody else's identity for, for your photo and also somebody else's name and then you can't write no shit. Be yourself, be your real Google, Gmail, YouTube account, motherfucking name and write what the fuck you got to write. Say that shit, bitch. If you got my number, motherfucker, call me. All right, better yet, how about you email me? Because my email address is right there. If you have anything to say, negative or positive, about me or my motherfucking daughter, then bitch, send me a goddamn motherfucking text message or email. Because my number ain't fucking changed, okay? Now, that's what the fuck I got to say about that, all right? So, whoever you are, bitch, because you watching right about now, I'm just going to say this, okay? You know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to fucking go crazy and worry about these dumb bitches or these dumb hoes on YouTube. However, I don't really give a fuck about what anybody thinks about me. I'm going to just put it plain and simple like that. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I just don't give a fuck about what anybody thinks about me or anything like that. You know what I'm saying? Like... It is what it is, but I would just really appreciate it if some people would fucking grow up. And then on top of that, I mean, you know what? I try to be a better person a lot, meaning I try to have a lot of patience with people, and I just try to be a better person in general. But it seems like that shit don't help because when you try to be a better person and you try to help motherfuckers, they just take advantage of you and tell you that you're more than 15 motherfucking minutes late. But I will keep you guys posted and updated. Um on what's being done i cannot wait so in case you guys are wondering about the hair that i'm wearing because i know i didn't ran enough of my motherfucking mouth this is actually a lace front a synthetic lace front by bobby boss and it's called muse m-u-s-e and i did a video today let me tell you i did a video on this i did a video on this I did a video on this, and I did a video on this today. I did four freaking wig videos today, so of course this was the last one. And then I went ahead and did my son's little girlfriend's hair because she had went and got a weave done. And that lady <laughs> jacked her weave up, like made it look so bad, so I had to hook her up. Now, I don't do sew-ins, but, you know, I could, I could hook it up and make it look a lot better than what it did. So that's what I was doing, so I left this on. But it's really cute. The only thing I don't really care about this wig so much is... It doesn't have any parting spaces like like this much. You know what I'm saying? No big deal, but it's very, very minimal. And I burnt myself the other day. You see that? Curling this hair from this video that I just did recently. Oh. But anyway, so yes, let's get into this real talk. If you guys have a real talk situation that you need to be reconciled, talked about, advised about, or whatever, you can go ahead and send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Please make sure to put in the subject line real talk so that I know it's a real talk video. And yes, I'm going to just go, look, I'm going to just hook up my edges real quick. I didn't use no got to be glue gel. I used something else. Um, so that's why my edges is not like staying fleekity fleek and yes put that in the subject line if you want to change the people's name in the video meaning like if you want to be called sally may but your name is rashida then let me know that shit but other than that let's get on to this real talk if you don't catch the email real quick then you can look in the description box my email is in there as well okay and she tongue smacks All right, so this one is pretty daggone long. Hey, April, I love all your videos. They're not, there are not enough real people out here. Thanks for doing these. I'm going to try to condense this as much as possible because I tend to go on and on and on. Okay, well, thanks for the fucking warning, okay? Thanks for the motherfucking warning. Just a disclaimer, I talk about some things that's graphic, so it's okay if you reply personally without making it into a video. I'm a junior in college, and for the past two semesters, I've been in a, I've been in a friend with benefits relationship with a guy we'll call Mav. 
He's really sweet and nice. We started going out being friends because we'd always do homework together. The past semester, we ended up living right next to each other. So the late night studying eventually turned into let's study and fuck afterwards. He talked about starting a relationship because according to him, we acted like we were in a relationship because I was over all the time and I had my clothes, brush, hair products, etc. at his place too. But honestly, I wasn't looking for a solid relationship like that. He said he respected what I wanted and agreed to no exclusive relationship because I'm a strong, independent black girl and he wouldn't even think to tell me what to do. I mean, I like to call myself independent, but hearing another black guy use the strong, independent black girl thing on me was weird to me, to say the least. Mabe is in a frat so we would always so he would always invite me to his frat parties I never went because the party scene is not really my thing and I'm always busy <clears throat> excuse me usual and I decided to reward myself and be a bit loose I've been in college for two years and never once went to a party so I decided why not to make a long story short I got raped by a frat brother at his party I unwillingly told Mabe what happened the night after I say unwillingly because he was trying to initiate foreplay and I could tell he wanted sex and I just broke down crying. I, could hi I couldn't hide the hurt I was feeling at that point. So I told him what happened. Even though that wouldn't have been my first decision, I begged him not to tell anybody. I could tell he was furious about what happened to me. And the next two days, he was really supportive and his shoulder to lean on. But then he started urging me to report and I told him I didn't want to. I've already made my decision and that I didn't want to go through all that. And no matter how often he suggested it, I was really firm in my response. The next weekend, I get a call from the vice president of his frat asking to meet with me, and I immediately knew Maeve told what happened. I was furious with Maeve and yelled at him, but he kept on insisting he was doing the best for me and kept on reassuring me he'll fix things. I agreed to meet with the vice president after consenting pressure, after constant pressuring from Maeve, and it was horrible. It was eight frat brothers, the board telling me what I know happened never happened, and that they wanted everything to remain on the hush hush. It was two whole hours of them blaming me for being raped after having to give them a play by play of a night I wanted to forget. I never wished that on anybody. After that experience, I told Maeve I couldn't discuss with his frat board anymore. I wouldn't discuss this with his frat, frat board anymore. Maeve accused me of not being serious about the situation and implied that I would want to re that it, and implied that I would want to report it if I really got raped. He started avoiding me, and a week after I found all of my stuff, I left at his place, left at my front door. No explanation. He called me around Thanksgiving time saying he was sorry for breaking my trust and he missed me. To be honest, I missed him too. He was the sweetest person and I knew he's trying to look out for me. He's worried about my rapist walking around free, but I don't think he respects what I want and how I want to handle what happened to me. It's not like I'm not serious. I started therapy after what happened to me. It's just that I don't want to report. Also, even his apology, he still impl implied that if, if, if I was really raped, I would want to report it. I didn't say anything after the apology he gave. I just listened and said, I'll, I'll come back to him with a response when I'm ready. I don't, I don't know what to do or what to say to him. Please help. Well, I don't recall what she told me to call her, but <clears throat> we're going to call her Tanisha. So Tanisha has been in college for two years, has never been to any type of parties at all because she's busy worried about her education. So she finally decided to go to a frat party with her so-called boyfriend or boyfriend friends with benefits. You know what I'm saying? He wanted to be in a relationship with her, et cetera, et cetera. To make a long story short, you guys already know what fucking happened. She got raped at the party, which is so hurtful and just so vile. It's just a violation. And she didn't even want to tell anybody. And and, and still, she told him unwillingly, only because he was trying to get a piece. You know what I'm saying? So, of course, she's not going to want to do anything. She doesn't want to be touched. She just had been violated. And this is something hard to deal with. I mean, I've never been raped, but I have met people that have. And I trust and believe being violated is a horrible, horrible feeling. You don't even have to be violated to be raped. There's all types of ways you can be violated, which can leave mental, physical scars on a person that they really don't want to relive. However, she told him she didn't want to talk about it. She didn't want to report it. And some things are left. Some people handle things a lot different. <clears throat> and I get it. You know, 
me personally, I don't, I can't say I would, and I can't say I wouldn't report it. I don't know because I've never been in that situation, but I can honestly say that it's something really, really scary. You know what I'm saying? But she's the person who didn't want to report it. She was already scared and probably embarrassed and ashamed. You know, a lot of people take rape situations all different types of way. Some people blame themselves. Some people feel ashamed and embarrassed. Some people feel scared. So you can't really knock a person. My lashes are killing me. You can't really knock a person if they don't want to say anything. You know what I mean? You have to just basically try to help them the best way that you can. And... I guess he wasn't really trying to do that, um, Maeve. So what he did in return was he let his frat know. I think I have a freaking lash. He let his frat brothers know or the frat board and the vice president know what happened to her. And they called her in for a meeting, a two-hour meeting where they basically chastised, chastised her, harassed her, and just basically belittled her. Got her to say that it didn't happen, to keep it on the hush-hush. And here's the things about these frats. It's horrible the way that they act towards human beings, okay? For one, thank goodness, and I'm not really sure if this is really so, but, you know, they have stopped a lot of these pledges and things like that because people have died during pledges. They have been seriously injured during pledges. And just a lot of different mental anguish has been taken upon people from just trying to join the frat or being in the frat. So it's really... um hurtful when you, you 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 try to go to somebody for help that you really didn't want to go to in the first place and then for them to just badger you like that and tell you that it's going to be on a hush hush me personally um from you telling me that i wanted to stay on a hush hush and not to say anything and it didn't really happen i think the type of person that i am i would have just been like oh i'm now i'm going to report this because you're not going to sit here and tell me that it didn't really happen you know what i mean when it did I and mean, it's not going to stay on the hush hush it's just so fucked up that the person that did this to her is not going to pay for his sins and his crimes like i feel like he needs to be punished and i'm pretty sure that i'm not the only one out there that feels this way however you got this gentleman who liked you at one point and now he's saying that if you was really raped you would have said something about it you would have wanted to report it has he ever been raped he don't even fucking know and i'm pretty sure if he was to have gotten raped it would be even more embarrassing to him and i'm pretty sure he wouldn't even want to spill the beans and tell anybody about it so with this type of person you know me personally you guys who were friends you guys were friends with benefits fuck buddies whatever you want to call it and he put your shit out in front of your motherfucking door and left it like that you know what i would do i wouldn't even fucking speak with him anymore I'm sorry, but I asked you already not to say anything and you was looking out for my best interest. I get it. Thank you very much. Thank you for your patronism, whatever, your friendship. But after that, and then you put my shit to the curb and just basically badgering me too, you made it even worse by saying, oh, if you really was raped, then you would have reported it. You ain't helping the situation any either. You know what I'm saying? You can never say anything to, you can never tell somebody I would do this and I would do that until you're really in their shoes. You know what I'm saying? Like with myself, when I was in a bad domestic violent relationship, this was way before my husband, I would say shit like, oh, I wouldn't even be dealing with that bullshit. I wouldn't even be dealing with that bullshit. I wouldn't put up with his ass. You can't really say something to a person. You can't really knock them and badger them until you have been put in their shoes. You don't know what the person is going through. And that's just like with a lot of situations now when women come to me or they say to me, you know, are they in a domestic violence situation? You know what I'm saying? I can't badger you and tell you to get out the relationship and Oh, you fucking stupid because you're in a relationship. You know what I'm saying? And you still get beaten up because I've already been in one, so I know how that is. You know what I'm saying? You can't say what you could would do until it actually happened to you. And I'm pretty sure that if it was he that got raped, he probably wouldn't want to tell nobody neither. So with that type of person and with that type of sensitivity level as him being a friend of yours and a fuck buddy, he wouldn't be my friend no more. He damn sure wouldn't be my motherfucking fuck buddy. Especially if you done put my shit out in front of my door and act like you ain't know me. Like I was some fucking stray puppy. You up put my shit out in front of the door like I ain't already been through some shit. You know what? You don't really owe him no explanation, Tanisha. You don't Oh, Mab, no explanation. You don't need to combat with him. You don't need to tell him how you feel. You don't, you don't owe him anything, okay? Honest to God, you don't owe him anything but your ass to fucking kiss, okay? You can kiss my ass with the door don't with the door split you or whatever the good Lord split you. Whatever the fuck it's called, you can tell him that, all right? I wouldn't owe him any explanation. I wouldn't even give him the time of day. Once you, first of all, was so deceitful to tell my business and then I had to sit with these motherfuckers, you better hope I'm still talking to you because now I got to relive the moment. But if you came out your face to me and said if I really was raped, 
then I will report it. Then I'm definitely not going to fuck with you no more. You can say sorry to the cows come home, okay? And I'm definitely still not going to fuck with you. Thanks for your apology, but we're still not going to be friends. Yes, I'm going to be the petty bitch that I am. We still not going to be friends. And third, you put my motherfucking shit out and put it in front of my door like I'm some trash on the street. We definitely not going to be friends now. Definitely. You don't owe him no explanation. He miss you. You miss him. The only fucking thing he miss is the free pussy. And when I say free pussy, meaning you ain't in no committed relationship with him. So therefore it's free pussy, free range motherfucking pussy. Okay. And for all you know, that same motherfucker who raped you at the frat party could be one of his cool buddies. So on that account, tell that nigga to kiss your motherfucking ass and goodbye, Felicia, Fernando, whatever the fuck he want to call you. Because you got dignity and pride and he ain't about to take those motherfucking things for you. So miss me with that bullshit is what you could tell him. Okay? And if you girls, how would you handle the situation? I'm just saying because I don't like that shit at all. Okay, and tongue smack. So this one is from one of my YouTubers, and I recognize her name. So we're going to call her um, Beauty. Hey, miss, my name is Beauty, but you can use a fake name. So I already changed it, okay? I just wanted your advice on a relationship slash mother problems. I'm 18, and I still live with my mom. She is so controlling over me. She doesn't want me to go to college or even go out now. I was talking to this guy that is 28. He's so sweet but has some issues and kids, so I left him alone. Wherever I go, I get a lot of compliments about how beautiful I am, but I just don't feel pretty enough because every time I meet a guy, we start talking and then I get in a relationship with them and they always end up leaving me because of my mom and also because I'm a virgin. I tried talking to my mom about how she's hard on me. Even my grandmother and sister tried to tell her, but she will not listen. I want to leave so bad, but I am and don't know where to go. I also just met a guy a couple of weeks ago, and all he does is tell me I am so pretty, but he has a girlfriend. He told me that they just broke up and stuff like that. Oh, that they're just on a break. Him and his girlfriend is on a break and stuff like that, but I, I'm starting to actually like him. So what I should do, what should I do about my mom and him? By the way, I will leave a pic of how I look. I hope. Um, I hope you and your family have a great holiday. First of all, she's so pretty with her big old eyes. She's so cute. Oh, my God. I probably get to see her. She's so cute. So, I love her because she be just on my videos, leaving her comments and stuff. And she's so cool. I really, really do like her a lot. But... So, Beauty. Beauty's 18. Her mom is strict on her. Her mom don't want her to go to college. She's still a virgin. She meets guys, but they leave her alone because of her mom and stuff. And also, she's met this guy, but this guy has a girlfriend and is telling her, um, basically, they're on a break. And what should she do about her mom and him? Girl, what you should do about your mom is have a heart-to-heart -heart with her. Like, seriously. You 18 years old. Now, first of all, I got an 18-year-old son, too. And I got a daughter who's 20. Now, first of all, I, I may be a little bit harder on my daughter because she's a girl. And so, when it comes to girls, we are a little bit overprotective because there are some doggish dogs out there. And you are actually meeting one and talking to one right now. Now, as for the college thing, honey... If you want to go to college, you cannot let anybody stop you from going to college, okay? You got to take it upon yourself and do what's best for you and your future, okay? Instead of just being at home with your mama, take it and do what's best for you and your future. Like, seriously, I do apologize if I'm coughing a lot. Tinky done gave me his cold. But your mom probably don't want you to leave and go away to college because she's probably scared of what's going to happen and things of that nature. But I get it. Don't you think I feel the same way? My son, my eldest son, he live in another state all the way on the other side of the world. OK. And how you think I feel when he went back? Like he came here with me originally just to make sure that I was okay and then he went back like he went back to be with his girlfriend and his son and you know I expected that like I don't want you to leave your son and your girlfriend for me to be with your mama you got a baby that would not be cool you know what I'm saying but it was I took it upon myself to move out here you know this is what I wanted to do however 
I worry about him just as much. But you have to reassure your mom that you are an adult and you can make adult decisions and you can make wise and mindful decisions. So that way some of what she may feel may be overcome and she may be able to have a little bit more trust in you. You know what I'm saying? However, I would not allow her or anybody to stop me from going to college because that is your education. And when your ass get old and crippled or old or whatever, who going to take care of you? Nobody but you. You need to have a foundation of your own. You need to set the mark in the world and have an education and do, do good in life and do something with yourself. So with that being said, I would not allow my mom to stop me from getting an education. However, for this dude that's like, oh, him and his girls on a break. Let me tell you something. It's one thing if you're talking to a guy and you ain't know he had no girlfriend and you just lovey-dovey with him and you didn't know, okay? We can't really blame that on you because you just did not know. But when you know that dude got a girl and you still wants to fuck with him, then that's a problem, okay? And as much as I like you, I'm going to just keep it real with you. If I would have known that you knew that my man had a girl, I would fuck your ass the fuck up on some real shit. Like, seriously? That's when your ass will get a beat down because if a bitch know that the nigga got a girl, okay, but he she still want to fuck with him because she like him or whatever, then that's when, you know what, I'm about to fuck your ass up and this nigga ass up, okay? And if I can't fuck him, I trust and believe a bitch like me got brothers, okay? I got brothers. I will have them motherfuckers come after you. And plus, I got two grown ass son so let's not even go there but a bitch ass will get cracked the fucking head open all right pavement and all i told you that nice shit is about to wear the fuck off for me so yes beauty you know he got a girl what kind of break is they taking um they ain't taking no break. I bet you she didn't know about that shit i bet you his girl don't know about taking no break so my thing is this Talk to your mama and set down some rules for you guys to both follow and let her know your education is strongly needed and you want to further it. As for this stupid motherfucker, you and him need to take a break and leave him the fuck alone. He has a girlfriend. I'm pretty sure you wouldn't want anybody to do that to you. How would you like it if I was like, oh, that's beauty's man, but mm, they on a break and he cute and I like him, so I'm fucking with him. You wouldn't like that. You would probably want to bash my motherfucking head in. Okay, so trust and believe. Don't do some shit that you wouldn't want done to you, okay? And plus, that's thotty moves. Y'all know thotty, thoughts, whatever the fuck y'all want to call these bitches these days that be doing the ratchet shit. Okay, that's horish moves. There's plenty of men out there in the world that you can seek attention from. And this nigga is not the one. He don't seem like a really good catch if he's so not worried about his girlfriend. Girl, please. Talk to your mom and leave this fool alone. And let Beauty know what the fuck y'all would do on some real shit. Like, because that shit ain't cool. Mm -mm. Okay. Hello, Miss April. I hope this is this acceptable for. I hope this is acceptable for real talk. I admire. Oh, I'm a plus size woman. I have always been a plus size, even from birth. I have been diagnosed with lupus, and I have lost and gained weight, lost weight and lost hair. This really hit my self esteem. I have been scared up from it. I have been scarred up from it. I don't feel pretty, and when it comes down to it, I, I have men that tell me I'm beautiful, but I feel like it's always to get something from me. I would love to have a relationship with a man who loves me, but I feel like I screw up a lot of relationships because of how I have been treated in the past. I only come to you for advice because you are so honest, and even if this doesn't make it to YouTube, could you please respond to me in an email form? I just admire your positive attitude. I don't know how to accept what a man is saying to me. In my mind, I just feel like he is only trying to get something. And then once he sees he can't, he will call me all types of fat bitches and names. I just need some input. Your videos for this Wednesday made me ha made me tear because it's so true and, ho and hit home to me. I love how you shared your feelings. I'm so passive and I want to be able to tell someone to go to hell and, and be okay with it. Or tell them to mind their neck and keep it moving. I try to be that way, but I just find myself going into hermit mode. I want the next year to be better, meaning this year, and I want it to be. I want to be more bold, a more a more bold year for me. Thank you so much for being you. You are so appreciated. You just don't know. Wow. So we're gonna call her China. 
So, China has some self-esteem issues. She's plus size. She's been plus size since the day she was born. She basically doesn't really know how to respond to men because she feels like whenever they're saying something nice to her, she doesn't know how to take it because she may feel like they're just trying to use her. And when they can't get what they want, they basically call her all kind of names and shit. And also, she has an issue with telling people to go to hell and not, and not feel bad about it. Girl, listen, let me tell you something. That's the problem with the world today, okay? And that's what I just said. You try to be nice. If you're too nice to people sometimes, then they walk all over you. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, got a phone call from one of the hair vendors. So like I was saying, so basically she's just, she's scared to tell people <laughs> to basically go to hell. I'm not saying that, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, being nice to people is a nice thing. It's a lot easier to be nice than it is to be rude. However, it seems like sometimes, I'm not saying go around to everybody to kiss your, kiss your ass or go to hell, but what I'm telling you is don't let people walk all over you. You know what I mean? Because it seems like when you allow people to walk all over you because they feel like you're so nice or whatever, then it's just that's when the walking all over you starts to take in place. And I'm just not for the walking all over me. However, when a motherfucker needs to be told go to hell, then they need to go be told to go to hell. Never feel bad about telling somebody to go to hell or mind your business, okay? Because if that's how you truly feel then that's how you truly feel. And that maybe needs what the fuck that person needs to do. Either go to hell or mind your motherfucking business. Straight up. Now, as far as you being a plus size, let me tell you something. There's so much body shaming and people always talking about somebody's size or what have you. There is somebody out there for each and every one of us, okay? I have been so down and out about my stomach size or what have you. But you know something? I'm going to tell y'all this. If you don't like it, I don't give a fuck. Because if you don't like it, then that means you don't really like me for the person that I am. And for that, I don't even want to fuck with you, okay? Now, yes, men will say many things to get what the fuck they want because that's just what the fuck they do. They say things, and so do women, because I have done it many a times. You know what I'm saying? However, however, we have to decipher between the bullshit and the non-bullshit, okay? When you meet someone, you have to figure them out. It's like an investigation. You don't really know who the fuck they are, but you got to figure this motherfucker out, okay? When a motherfucker starts asking you for shit straight off the bat, like in the beginning of the relationship, like a month, two months in, then nigga, you better find your way because I'm sorry, I'm really not trying to fuck with broke niggas. But I'm not a gold digger, but I'm not trying to fuck with broke niggas. So if you ain't got your own, then that's the type of dude that I would want to stare away from. You got to come straight with me before you even come through. Like, if you ain't got nothing to show for it, then I'm not really fucking with you. And also, real shit, I don't really want to fuck with you anyway, because you ain't the one and only that I truly do love. Anyhow, so I ain't really trying to fuck with you and know how. But I understand, you know what, the thing... I've been in that situation where I've scared off many a men, or not many, but enough of them, because of my past, you know what I'm saying? So they find me to be very aggressive, you know what I'm saying, and shit like that. And I'm cool with that, you know what I'm saying? I'm not about to change who I am. So here's the thing. Don't change the person that you are to please any motherfucking person, you know what I'm saying? If, if you're aggressive and that's how you are, then just remain yourself because sometimes when you get all mushy and be a pushover, then that's when the true vulnerability of you comes out and that's when the true asshole of the man comes out and they ready to walk all over you and use you up for whatever the fuck you got. You know what I'm saying? Be proud and be happy with who you are. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, do you think that I'm always happy about myself? Yeah, I get on camera and I seem happy because I could cuss your motherfucking asses out in a second. That's just who I am as a person, you know what I'm saying? However, so there are days when I'm not too happy, you know what I'm saying? There's lots of days when I'm not too happy. There are days when I'm paranoid. There are days when I worry a lot, you know what I'm saying? And sometimes I got to tell myself, April, just chill the fuck out and relax a little bit. Just relax a little bit, you know what I'm saying? So I don't always, I'm not always as confident as you may think I am, you know what I'm saying? You have to stop worrying about what other people are because I'm not always as confident you know what I'm saying and there's days when I'm like fuck it I might be plus size and I might okay be so my memory card was full and I had to like do too much stuff so like I was saying I'm not 
always so confident of myself and who I am as a person. You know, I have, I go through a lot of trials and tribulations. I go through a lot of shit here in my house that makes me just feel like less of a person sometimes. Sometimes, you know, a lot of people be like, oh, you're so pretty. You're so pretty. But like, I don't be feeling like that always because I don't feel so pretty. Like guys don't really pay me attention like that. I don't know if it's because I'm so mean looking. I've been told that I have these looks on my face that would scare anybody off. I don't really notice that I'm looking like that half the time, you know what I'm saying? But like I have my days when I don't feel really confident and then I just be feeling like I look like shit. I don't even care. I don't care if no man ever wants me. I know who I want to be with. I just be going through a lot of shit sometimes. I go through a lot of emotional shit sometimes. One minute I'm happy, one minute I'm paranoid, one minute I'm stressed out, one minute I'm worried. So one minute I'm like, I don't care, carefree. So I go through a lot of things and the only thing that I can tell you is to just be yourself and stop worrying about everybody else. Lot, yeah, get granted, people do need to mind their business and it's hard for people sometimes to mind their business. They just don't know how, you know what I'm saying? Unfortunately. And some people don't have the balls to tell other people to kiss their ass or to go to hell. That's okay. You don't have to. Because you know what? Sometimes you don't need to stoop to somebody else's low level to just get a point across. Sometimes you just got to walk away and be the bigger person and just be the bigger person. Though they may feel like they got one over you, they really did it. You're just walking away being a more mature, bigger person. And sometimes I'm able to do that as well as just walk away and be the bigger person instead of telling that bitch at the office that I'm a spaz out. I could have been like, you know what? That's fine. Whatever. But you know, I was in my feelings and I had just had enough. And some days we have like that. And I'm pretty sure my dear, then you may have a day where you just spaz the fuck out, whether you know it or not. Trust me. Sometimes when we go off the handle, it's not a pretty sight, but as for worrying about what a man thinks of you, trust and believe. I get it. Sometimes I feel that way too. But then I have to say to myself, well, if he really does like me. He'll like me for all that I am. If I have a pouch of a stomach, if I have a big old head or no hair at all and I wear wigs, if he really does like me, he's going to like me for the person that I really truly am. And that's hard to find sometimes, you know, I truly get that. That's why I'm not that I've given up. I have never given up. I just... I haven't given up on looking for a love. Um, I just don't really need to look because I know who really loves me and who I really love. And so that was my mistake in the beginning. You know, I was so happy about getting a divorce, but, you know, truly do miss him. I'm going to tell you that. Truly, truly do miss him. And there'll be a lot of bitches that might say, oh, well, he was a drunk. He really wasn't a drunk. He just drank too much sometimes. And he would run off at the mouth. And I don't have tolerance for that. Yeah, so what? He did go to jail. Who has it? I've been there, too. But that's who I want to be with. So that's no really concern of you guys. And I don't really care what y'all think about it. It's my life. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to be with who makes me happy and who really, truly loves me. So it's not that I've given up. I just, you know what I'm saying? I have allowed myself to realize that, you know, we have to grow up as a person. Sometimes people need to grow up. And I guess he has. But for you, my dear, I wouldn't say change your aggressiveness and let your guard down. Because sometimes when you let your guard down, what kind of crazy shit start happening? People start taking advantage of you. Then you're in a whole world full of other bullshit that you just don't need to be in. But what I would do is... I would try to have more confidence in myself and love myself and the person I am because nobody is perfect. There's no one man or woman in this world that's perfect. They got it all going on. You know what I'm saying? They can portray like they do, but let's just keep it real. At the end of the day, you might be taking off that lipstick, that hair, those lashes or whatever else. You are taking off a part of you that ain't really you. So let's keep it real. Nobody's perfect, and I'm not about to sit here and portray like I am because y'all already know I got on some fake-ass hair, some fake-ass lashes, some makeup. So when I take this all off, who am I? I'm April. And if you can't be yourself and love yourself and have someone love you for who you are, then honey, baby, child, then that person is meant for you and you to love yourselves. Everybody wants to be loved, 
But then some people don't even want to love themselves. You got to love yourself first. Love yourself, girl, before you love anybody else and allow anybody else to love you. If you really truly love yourself, then a lot of shit that goes on in the world, you will not be bothered by it. That's why I don't be bothered by a lot of shit anymore. I mean, some things I do, I just really feel like don't fuck with my kids is my main concern. Like, don't fuck with my kids. Other than that, I'll be cool. Cool as a fan. Cool as a breeze. But yeah. So I think I took up enough of you guys' this time. This is my second memory card. I'm going to go ahead now. I'm going to do my other video. Got some dollar shit to haul. It ain't for the dollar tree. It ain't. But I love you guys, and I hope you enjoyed this real talk. You know what I'm saying? For y'all shady bitches that's going to thumbs it down, go fuck ahead. I don't care. You know what I'm saying? At least you was watching. Whatever. On that note, stay diva and divolicious. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe. Enjoy your weekday. And yes, make sure you take a look out for my other video that will be out later on this afternoon. Because I'm, I'm going to mainly put two videos out on Wednesday. Some days too anyway. But yeah, make sure you guys check it out. Love you.